during this whole tragedy, I was angry. Of course I am, I still am, but I can't change anything. All I can do is learn how to live with it. But Deborah Milkey spent nearly half of her life behind bars for the murder of her son. Her conviction was eventually thrown out because of what the Court of Appeals called egregious prosecutorial misconduct. In part two of our exclusive interview, Milky describes her life after death row and the message she has for the men who killed her son. Photojournalist Brad Gass with Deborah Milky in her own words. Every single day I think of Christopher. The hardest thing I'm dealing with now is when I see people his age. He's gonna be 37. If he was still alive, he'd be 37. So when I see young men that are in his age group, it really, it's hard to deal with. She lost her son. She lost the ability to attend his funeral and to grieve his death. She lost 25 years of her life. She almost lost her very life by being executed. And she lost the last few years of time she could have spent with her terminally ill mother before she died. She lost a lot. When she went into prison, there was no web. There was no internet. There was no cell phone. Head north on North 6th Avenue. There was no GPS. All these things would happen in the 25 years that she was incarcerated on death row in a solitary cell. I've been asked, why aren't you so angry and just hateful? Well, first of all, I've never been a hateful person. There's still a lot of people think that you were responsible for the killing of your son. Anything you can say about that? To people who still think she's guilty, the Ninth Circuit and the Arizona Court of Appeals both reviewed this case thoroughly. And they said that this was egregious prosecutorial and police misconduct that constituted a severe stain on our justice system. And that's the truth of what happened in Deborah's case. During this whole tragedy, I was angry. Of course I am, I still am, but I can't change anything. All I can do is learn how to live with it. And for me, anger is a huge emotion and it's heavy. And it's, it, it just takes too much energy to be angry. This is my longtime client who <laughs> is now free as she should have been all along. She and saved I, my life. She's an incredibly strong person and she was able to work through the grief and rebuild her life which is fascinating. A lot of people don't. Many people do not, and especially not after being incarcerated for almost 25 years and on death row for 22 of those. I was miserable in prison, and why would I want to be miserable out here once I got my freedom back? So I don't want to be miserable. What would you like to say to the detective? I don't know how you could look at yourself in the mirror every day knowing that you falsely arrested somebody, uh, you, you accused me of something I did not do. You didn't even have the decency to have a witness in the room to do your job the right way. The only reason you didn't do your job the right way and didn't have a witness in the room is because you walked in that room and you knew what you were gonna do to me. You did it to other people and you you knew what you were gonna do to me. But to your surprise, I didn't give up. I didn't go away. I didn't keep my mouth shut. I fought it until the very end. The two men who actually killed Christopher, Jim Stiers and Roger Scott, are both on death row. Neither of them testified against her, and one of them maintains to this day that she had nothing to do with it whatsoever. The other one turned down a plea offer to save his life. I don't think about them. Um, I can't change anything that they did. I can't change it. In the very beginning, I didn't know what really happened, so it was hard for me to, who, do I, who should I be angry at? I didn't know what happened. But then after I started to learn things, then I, yes, of course, I was very angry and deceived. And I had some, at some point, some really terrible thoughts about them. I don't advocate for their execution because it's not gonna bring my son back. And um, 
it's not going to change anything. I'm not going to get the 24 years that I lost. I'm not getting that back. They're not even worth space in my head. And also, the death penalty for them, once they're executed, it's over for them. But it's not over for me. It'll never be over for me. We made several attempts to reach out to attorneys for Armando Saldate, the detective who claimed that Milky confessed. We never heard back. As for Deborah Milky, she now lives in Florida. We interviewed her this past summer while she was in town to celebrate her attorney, Lori Vopel, who received the prestigious Tom Karras Criminal Justice Award from the Arizona Bar. That award recognized Vopel for outstanding work advocating principles of criminal justice including her work on the case that set Deborah Milkey free.